It brings me such satisfaction to be able to sit here and tell you that I can finally bring you a full movie review of something I've been waiting for for well over a year. Hello everybody and welcome back to another movie review video. My name is Joker and today I'm going to be giving you my full review, spoiler and spoiler free, for Joker. So yes, this is going to be a non-spoiler and a spoiler review. When I get to the point where I'll tell you there's going to be spoilers, I'll let you know on the screen so you don't have to worry about getting anything spoiled if you do plan on seeing this movie. So just from the start, the amount of hype that was surrounding this movie was absolutely ridiculous. There was literally not a day that went by where you could not see a review coming out from early screening saying that this movie was absolutely ridiculous and crazy and amazing and whatnot. Then as the movie kept progressing as far as screenings went, it ended up going to the Venice Film Festival and winning the Golden Lion, which is basically their version of the Best Picture Award that you would know from the Oscars, and the buzz just continued to grow around the movie. And of course, that's where a lot of the problems around the movie started. After other early reviews started coming out talking about how dark and gritty and how divisive this movie was. Divisive was a word I heard way more than any other word in any review either typed out or spoken on camera. It was going to be a divisive film. The fans were going to be on one side of the fence or the other. It was just ridiculous. But it got to this point where I realized that this was not going to be your typical run-of-the-mill comic book movie. In fact, I would go as far as to say that this isn't even a comic book movie at all. It is simply just a character study of someone that would be known as the Joker. The only thing that really pegs this as a comic book movie is that it does take the aspects of the Batman universe such as Gotham City, the Wayne family, and the character of the Joker. While this movie in itself is an original origin story for one of, if not the most iconic comic book villains of all time, at its core, this is the story of a troubled individual that is brought to his worst side because of the corrupt and troubled society that is surrounding him. And you really can't shrug that off. Yes, Gotham is known for being corrupt and politically out of control, but a lot of the inspiration for this version of Gotham City has come from the very issues that we're facing currently in society today. One of which being gun violence, which has become a very serious and sensitive topic to a lot of people. So much so that there are certain theaters in the United States that are putting undercover cops in all of the screenings of Joker just in case something were to happen. And on top of that, all of the families of Aurora, Colorado that suffered from the mass shooting that happened in the theater showing of The Dark Knight Rises have reached out to Warner Brothers expressing their concerns, so much to the point that the entire city of Aurora has stopped all screenings of The Joker and will not be showing it at all. And yes, while I understand that it is just a movie and that I personally do not think that movies and video games are the cause of violence, it does raise a lot of concerns for stuff that could possibly just happen because of what society has become. But the overall picture is, how was the movie? Because that's exactly what we're here to talk about. And honestly, the movie was pretty incredible. The new light on the Joker is almost a fresh take on the character and you truly root for him in the movie until you just simply can't anymore. That point is different for everyone, yes, but it's important to understand that you're not supposed to be on his side by the end of the movie. This movie is just one shocking event after another and if you go into this movie unaware of it, it will definitely take you through a loop. Joaquin Phoenix's performance is undoubtedly one of his best, and he takes on the persona of Arthur Fleck in ways that other actors simply just can't manage. However, behind his performance, one of the key driving points of this film is definitely the score written by Hilder Goyana de Tour, which does a tremendous job of just showing the path that the story is taking with every action that Arthur takes. And all of the other performances from other actors and actresses on screen, especially Robert De Niro and Zazie Beetz, are still great even if they get barely any screen time as Joaquin is the center focus for about 95% of the film. And while this movie is a slow burn as far as the character of the Joker is concerned, the movie did enough to keep driving my interest until the end of the movie, so much so that I ended up unknowingly sitting through the entirety of the credits at the end. Overall, with cast performances, the beautiful cinematography, and an out-of-control film score, this movie is definitely a must-see. With that said, though, I do have some issues with some of the writing choices, and there are some story aspects to the movie that I wasn't really fond of, but overall, still a fantastic movie, and I would definitely give it, out of 10, an 8.5. And I know one of the big questions that everyone is going to be asking for some dumb reason is, should I take my kids to go see this? Absolutely not. In all honesty, if you're a parent and, and you're considering taking a small child, even, even at the age of 10 to 12, to this movie, even regardless of the rating, shame on you. Absolutely. Shame on you. This is not a movie meant for kids. This isn't even a movie meant for most adults, okay? Sure, there are some people that are going to be out there that are desensitized to a lot of the violence just because of what the mass media has become today, but you need to understand that this movie is just not meant for certain people. My best advice would be to see it on your own before considering taking anyone else to go see this movie. However, that does not take away from the fact that at its core, this movie is cinematically amazing. But with all of that said, we're going to go ahead and move into spoiler territory now, so if you don't want any spoilers, just 
just hold on just a minute. You can go right here in the video to see my final thoughts and wrap up on the video without getting any spoilers because I assume that if you're watching this and you want to see the movie, you don't want to be spoiled. Simple as that. So here we go. Last chance. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. So going back to the whole aspect of rooting for the character as the Joker, and it's true for some people. Some people are going to root for him. There were some people like my roommate who went into this movie at knowing exactly what was going to be happening. You know, you, you see a movie called Joker, you know he's a villain. There's no point in rooting from him even from the start. So he said right off the bat, he wasn't on board with the character whatsoever because he knew it was going to get into very dark territory. Now, on the other side of that, if you are a sympathetic person, like overly sympathetic, you might find a lot of times in this movie where you are understanding where the Joker is coming from and why he's taking the actions that he is simply because of how society is treating him. However, once those actions take place, you might feel different, but it is easy to understand how there are a few points in this movie where you do genuinely feel bad for how the character is being treated, and it's just, it's a really sad thing to see. But then again, like I said, once the actions have taken place, you start to realize he still shouldn't have done what he's done. One of the examples for me personally is when the first kill happens in the movie. We see it in the trailers when he's on the train sequence and he starts getting picked on by those three guys. In the movie, he happens to have a gun on him that he got from a co-worker, and he ends up open firing right there in the subway train, killing one of the guys. Understandably, I was like, I can be, I can kind of see where he's coming from. This was out of self-defense. He's literally on the ground getting the shit kicked out of him. That's all that's happening. I started to go away from that after he ended up hunting down the other two guys throughout the subway train so far, so much so that he shot one of them multiple times as he tried to make his way up the stairs to get away from him. So at that point I was just like, okay, I can understand the self-defense aspect of this, but you're driving this to a whole nother level that never needed to happen to start with and I don't know if I can be on board with what the character is doing anymore. And even with all of that being said, there are still going to be groups of people that go to see this movie and root for the Joker the whole way through that are completely desensitized to violence and don't see anything wrong with the actions he's taken. I don't personally agree with that, but then again, I cannot control how everyone thinks. But especially when you see some of the stuff that happens in this movie, as far as, you know, killing the guys on the subway, to the point where he even suffocates his own mother in a hospital bed, kills one of his co-workers, he shoots Robert De Niro live on TV, and in the very end of the movie, even kills his psychiatrist and then runs around Arkham with blood footprints all over the place. And yes, that is the Joker, that is what we expect out of the character, but as a, from a real-life standpoint, this is something that you should not be rooting for, and you should not be cheering for but you need to understand that going into this movie once again he is not a good person this is not a good feel-good movie this is a bad movie this is about horrible things happening but aside from all the dark gritty violence some of the issues i had as far as the script goes some of the other characters were just written kind of bland even though the acting was tremendous from all of the cast included some of the lines that were just written seemed very plain and NPC like almost as just because the main focus was simply on Arthur becoming the Joker He was such a main focal point of the film that every other character's alliance kind of fell flat at times And it felt as if they didn't even need to be in the scene to begin with one of the other interesting things that I thought that happened in this movie was the fact that the Waynes were way more involved than I was expecting Sure, I saw them in the trailer So I knew that they would be involved in some way shape or form But I did not think they would be involved so much to the point where it turns out that Arthur's mother was clinically insane into believing that she had a child with Thomas Wayne, which was Arthur. So Arthur goes through half of this movie believing that Thomas Wayne is his estranged father. I personally don't know if I'm okay with the choice just because as far as the Joker has been concerned in all of the Batman universe, as far as movies, comics, TV shows, what have you, and I understand that this is supposed to be a completely original take and it's not supposed to be like anything we've seen before, the Joker really does not have a lot of entanglement with the Waynes as far as Thomas and Martha. Yes, there is that callback to the Batman 89 movie where it is actually Jack who actually ends up killing Bruce Wayne's parents and becomes the Joker later in the film, but that's just one adaptation that we see. And even then, there's not that much going back and forth between Thomas, Martha, and the Joker. Whereas in this movie, he's constantly going after Thomas Wayne, trying to get answers to who he is and who is his real father. And even doing that, it does kind of paint Thomas Wayne as the villain for how he's acting a lot of the times throughout this movie. But then again, it makes me to wonder, was that intentional? Are you really trying to make him seem like he's the bad guy here and he's actually doing wrong for the city of Gotham, which has never really been the case? Case, or is it just because it's leaning so much toward on the villain aspect that the villain is trying to see the good guys as the bad guys and vice versa? That's something that I could easily see. Everyone's trying to see since the Joker is the 
pretty much the protagonist of this movie, you can see him as being the good guy, whereas the good guy being Thomas Wayne, Martha Wayne, the good people of Gotham becoming the villains because of just the different sides of the story aspect. And with that, I think that would actually make this movie a whole lot better if that was the actual case. However, I think that's just my interpretation of the film. So either, either way it goes, I think if that's what they're going for, it would probably make the film a whole lot better. If that was unintentional, I think it's just based up to your opinion. Overall though, again, this was a absolutely fantastic movie. I loved everything about it. And so far worldwide, it's made $97.1 million just from the Thursday night opening and the Friday so far. So for this movie, it's already breaking box office records to the surprise of no one. And I definitely think it's got that Oscar nomination buzz as far as possibly best picture and even best performance by Joaquin Phoenix. But did you see Joker yet? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't seen the movie, do you plan on seeing it? Or is this something you're going to wait a little ways down the line and then see it when it comes to possibly a streaming service or just straight to Blu-ray and DVD? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to talk about it. But until another movie comes out that I really want to do a review on, that is going to be it for this video, guys. Remember, if you like what you saw, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more movie review videos or if you'd like to see anything else. But until then, and as always, I will see you guys next time.